This is part three of the National Scene Certificate Grade 12 Exemplar for Grade 12 Paper 1. This is from 2014. In this video, as I said, we, this is part three. We are dealing with question two, which is the OOP question. So it's part three of the OOP question. And if you remember from the previous parts, we created our own object called T Relay Event with those attributes, event, team, here, and record time. And then we created those methods with the constructor to get each of those individual attributes. And then we got a check for record, which will take in two uh, parameters and check if the record has changed. And if it's changed, it will record new data. If it's the same, it will add on the new data. And then a two string to display that information. And this is the main form or main uh, question that uses that object. And we, in the last video, we coded the 2.2.1. So we're going to move to 2.2.2. And there is the question. It's quite a long question. It's like 23 marks. So let's get stuck in and see how far we can get. Okay, the user is going to enter the name of the school, of the winning team, and the record for the new time. And that, as you can see, is recorded over there in those two edit boxes. And when they click on this validate time, there's quite a few things we want them to do. First of all, um, the validate the record winning, the recorded winning time that was entered to make sure that a numerical value is entered. So we've got to check that a numerical value is entered. And then if an invalid time is entered, we must give a suitable error message and then just not allow the user to do anything else. So let's start with that. We're going to first check that the time that they entered in is a numerical value. So some sort of real number. So let's see if we can do that. So to check if the number is a numerical number, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to declare some variables quickly. Um, the first thing I want to declare is I'm going to declare some sort of real value, which I'll make as the new time. And then I'm going to make that obviously because the, the numerical time, it's obviously going to be something points so many seconds. So it's, that's why I'll make it a real. But I'm also going to make another variable called, I'm going to call it check of type integer. I'm going to show you why I'm going to use or what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use a function which I don't know if you're aware of called val. Now val takes in a string. Now we're going to take in this string over here where we get the time which is edt time. So I'm going to take in the string edt time and its text property. That's the string that I want to put into that part. The next field that comes in, if you if you remember, if you look there when I put the bracket there, you'll probably see it pop up. It is a some sort of variable. It doesn't tell you what type, but it's actually some sort of number um, variable. So I'm putting in new time, which is the real, and then I'm putting in this check. And the way it works, if you don't know how val works, is val will take that value. If it was like for example, 41.13, it will take that string convert it to whatever type that is, so in this case it's a real, convert it to real and put it into there for me. If there's a problem at any point during that conversion, let's say I gave it this number to put into the real. Now do you see there's an A in the middle of it? Now that's a problem. So then what it will do is instead of new time being 41.13, it'll make new time equal to a zero and check is going to equal to a 4 because there's a problem at position 4 in the conversion process. If check is equal to a 0, that means the whole string that, that, that we put in there got converted successfully to new time. So that's what I'm going to use to see that they put in a valid number. So because that's a real, if that is converted successfully to a real, then it will make check into a zero. The same thing would happen if new time was an integer and we entered an integer value in and it was successfully converted to an integer, then check would also be a zero. So once I've done that, I'm going to, and it won't crash if there's a problem. So all I'm going to do here is say, if check is not equal to a zero, now if you've forgotten that not equal, that's how you do a not equal to, Okay, so it's just, uh, when I do it, I'll remember Rihanna. So shine bright like a diamond. It looks like a diamond there. So whenever you think of not equal to, just think shine bright like a diamond. If check is not equal to zero, then I want to do the following. Well, they said we must sh give a suitable message. So I'm going to say um, invalid time entered. Entered. There we go. And then after that, I don't want to do any more code after this. So I'm going to just use exit. Exit will exit out of this procedure. So any code I write after this will not be done. 
So let's just first check to see if this actually works. So let's just run it. So this is a valid time and I can't click on that button. So I think in the previous button I would have had to make it clicked. So let's go to it quickly. This button, button valid enabled equals true. So I, I need to click on that button first. So I forgot about that. First click on that button. Now I can click on this button. And I click on it and nothing popped up. So technically that is correct. So if I go and I put an A in there, it's going to go, oops, sorry, invalid time entered, and it'll stop right there. So there we go, done. We've done the first part, which says record to make sure that it's a valid time that has been entered. Perfect. Now, if a valid time has been entered, the next step is we must dynamically instantiate a button. So that's quite a complicated thing. So let's go through the steps for that. So let's go back to our program and we're going to dynamically instantiate a button using these um, coordinates or these details, sorry, these details there. So we're going to come back to this to get the details. So let's go back to our code. And over here, we're going to dynamically instantiate a button. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is I need to declare some sort of button object. So let's call it btn check status. We're going to create this button or check record. That's probably going to be a better one check record and that's going to be of top T button so there's my button that I created now just like with objects we're going to dynamically instantiate so I'm going to call its name btn and it's check record now that I'm going to use the create like you would do for a normal create of like in objects so I'll go T button dot create now does this look familiar to how we've used objects because exactly that we're dynamically creating this object that doesn't technically exist we're going to create it and that's how you would use that objects constructor create and it's taking in some sort of owner who owns this so uh, we need to find an owner for it I don't know if there are any details here for it. does it say it's owner no but it's coming from a group box so I'm assuming we can use the group box Q22 for that. So let's just double check that we've got that group box. I'm assuming it's this group box. So we're going to probably create it somewhere over here. So GRP Q22. We're going to make that as the um, owner. So GRP Q22. There it is. That is going to be the owner of this button. So that's the only uh, parameter that we need to give it. Now we need to set all those other statements. So the btn check record. Now that's going to have a dot parent. And that's going to equal to, if we look here, is there a parent? Do they give a parent? No, they don't. So I'm going to just give it that same group box. So that group box there, dot two two. So that it gets put onto that group box. And then we're going to have the left and right properties and all that. So let's go left. That's going to equal, if we look here, left is going to be 72, the top one's 58, so 72 for the left. And the button record dot top is going to be 158. I could probably use a width over here just to make my life easier. But I could say width btn check record do, and then I can do all of these things begin, and I'm, and I can do all of these things inside it just to save some time so I don't have to type that all out every single time so let's do that maybe so that is another way of doing it when you use a width then whatever you write inside the bracket or inside the begin and end here will pretend that or it'll say it so with a btn check record dot in front of it so this is the same as saying btn check record dot parent okay so there's the top field we also want the heart field which we get from 55 and then they said the width is 235 so width is equal to 235 and then the caption must say test record so the caption now all of this as I said it's btn check record dot caption is equal to and they said if I remember could check record check record okay so all that's done. Now the next part is we need to create this on click btn check status. So let's type that in. On click is going to be btn check status. Now that is calling a procedure. Now that procedure at the moment doesn't exist. So we need to go create it. So I'm going to go to the top here and I'm going to create that procedure just like we would a normal button. So call btn check status. 
and it's going to be like those other buttons so i'm also going to have a sender as a parameter like that let's see if that works and i'm going to draw shift c and here i'm going to write the code for when you click on this button it's going to come to this procedure and this procedure will run over here now over here all they want me to do if i look at the code uh, functionality check for record we must use that method that we created in the other videos um, to see whether the time winning time was entered was correct and then we need to make use of the two string to display that information so let's do that so we're going to first of all we've got this global variable if you remember correctly called boys relay and we're going to call it dot check for record and it takes in two parameters the string the name of the new team and that is found in the edt team edit control that's this one over here and then the edt time that's going to be in the next one so let's have a look at the time edt time dot text now the problem here is this is going to return some sort of string and if you remember correctly when i put that bracket in you see the first one was a string the second must be a real so i need to just make sure that i convert this from a string to a float so that it can be done now you it won't cause an error because remember we validated that before this button was created over here to make sure that it was a legitimate number so there we go so we're going to call that procedure or that uh, method that we created and then once that's done we must just display the results so in the red output we first just clear everything and then we're going to say red output dot lines dot add and we are going to use the two string function now you can't just write two string like that because it doesn't know what two string is you got to say ah it's my variable boy relay dot two string then the two string comes up great and then once that's done uh, I've got a funny feeling that this button is disabled if I look there is it disabled and so you go to enabled where's enabled can't see it e, e, e. there it is false yes so we should probably enable this record status so if I go back to my code so then btn record status dot enabled should be made true so that we can at least do the third part of the question okay so basically what's happened we first check to see that there was a valid time if there wasn't we show a message and we exit completely from this procedure none of this will happen then if there is a valid time then we created the button with those specs and we created the, when you click on that button it runs that procedure and then we created that procedure over here and says we're going to check for record using what we created in our object and then we cleared the 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 display the rich edit and we use the two string to display the new results so let's run it and see what it looks like Hopefully it works touch wood no errors so far so good so we do the current now this is equaled to the current record so when i click validate time it'll add on the new team and the new year so i click validate time and then there's a check for record so obviously the validate time is one there's a check for record it's appeared right at the bottom i click on it and they're displayed very nicely if i go and change this time to a, z a better time and i validate it yes that's fine if i check for record ah there we go it's a better time so there's a new team a new here just by itself fantastic we will do the final part of that question in our next video the next part of part four um, if you want to go see the first few parts then you're welcome to go to our website mrlongrt.wix.com slash mrlongrt um, like us on facebook go to our twitter account follow us there so you can see whenever we update new videos all of the videos that we display so if you don't find the video on the website you'll find it on um, the youtube channel there at the bottom mr long education please guys go see go look at them go see if the videos can help you we'd love to hear from you and also the website looks something like this so that can give you an idea so please use the website use our social media we'd love to hear from you we hope that these videos can help you pass rt and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way